Good morning, everybody. This is Dave Gotchas from NCAR. We are going to give folks just another minute or two to join because we still see that there's a pretty good rate of people jumping on the call. Um, yeah, but we'll get started here with the uh, webinar on Wharf Hydro and National Water Model Community Resources. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get started now. Um, thank you for everyone for joining. Um, we are giving this presentation uh, primarily as a uh, service to folks who uh, may be new or becoming more and more familiar with uh, Wharf Hydro or um, in its specific configuration as the national water model. Uh, the idea here is not to give a technical description of the model, uh, but instead to uh, go through many of the user resources that are available. And so this is a joint presentation between uh, us here at NCAR and folks from Kawasi uh, who've developed a number of different uh, tools or support mechanisms or documentation for folks interested in using uh, the Wharf Hydro system in the National Water Model. So our presentation uh, has an outline like this. Really, uh, again, we're providing a listing of all the community resources that are available uh, for the Wharf Hydro system. Uh, we're certainly going to emphasize uh, the, the references to the code, many of the data processing tools uh, and training materials and other user support mechanisms that are available uh, for folks out in the community. And then uh, towards the end, we're going to highlight some of the different development and use applications by the user community uh, that are in use around the world. So the Wharf Hydro modeling system actually began back in 2003 uh, under a modeling system that was called NOAA Distributed. Originally, the code, which has become Wharf Hydro, uh, was a hydrologically enhanced land surface model, which was used for land surface initialization and weather and climate prediction models. So it had an explicit emphasis on estimating uh, many hydrologic model states and fluxes as they were to be coupled to the atmosphere. Over the many years since then, however, the modeling system has evolved, and now it includes multi-scale representations of terrain and channel routing physics, as well as a number of different physics options for land surface thermodynamics. So it's, it is a comprehensive land surface hydrologic modeling system. It is able to run with prescribed meteorological data, what we call a one-way configuration, or uh, in that uh, legacy two-way coupled mode, uh, coupled with an atmospheric model. And that's why you'll sometimes see people refer to the modeling system being used in these different ways. And there's a little diagram there that shows you sort of the schematic pictorials of how uh, that looks. The Wharf Hydro system is, is really what happens on the right side of the model in its calculation of land surface hydrologic states and fluxes. Many of the outputs that come out of the model are what you'd expect from most hydrologic models, in particular distributed physics-based hydrologic models. I'm going to show you some outputs of what uh, comes out of the model um, in terms of uh, what's running now in operations and its configuration as the national water model, which is why we see sort of the whole continental U.S. domain. So uh, estimates of soil moisture at a variety of different uh, discretization levels within the model. Uh, you can see in this case, we have estimates of the depth to soil saturation, um, and the National Water Model configuration has its own resolution specifications that are associated with it. We'll talk about those in a minute. Uh, estimates of evapotranspiration, ponded water or surface overland flow depth. This is actually an image that was grabbed from some forecasts that were made for Hurricane Irma uh, back in September of 2017. Estimates of snowpack conditions, snow water equivalents, and snow depth, snow covered area, as well as stream flow. And in this case, we're showing stream flow on a vectorized network uh, across the U.S., which is what the National Water Model runs on. And in this particular case, uh, the model's outputting channel flow and uh, velocity. From all those, of course, we can extract stream flow at a point to generate the hydrographs, which are uh, available um, at specific points or anywhere along those networks. Okay. 
In its national water model configuration, uh, there is a very specific set of physics options, uh, model elements or mesh resolutions uh, that are utilized and data processing algorithms. That's what sort of makes uh, the national water model a particular configuration of wharf hydro. And those are tailored for operational hydrologic prediction. So that's where this uh, difference in terminology comes from. Um, the national water model went into operations in 2016 and um, we're now working on our fifth version of the model to go into operations uh, during late next year. As you can see in the diagram here, the entire modeling ecosystem contains not only the physics codes, which are contained in the black box in the lower left, but also the number of data pre-processing uh, uh, pre-processing algorithms which prepare data to go into it. That includes meteorological data, GIS or geospatial data, uh, data that's coming in in real time for uh, data simulation, and then on the post-processing side, a number of different tools uh, for model evaluation and visualization. So that is basically the quick overview of the modeling system that we're talking about here. Um, and we will now start to move towards uh, what this specific configuration is and how folks can start to get more information about it and what tools there are to learn about it. So this slide here uh, wraps up uh, a number of the different physics options that are available uh, within the Wharf Hydro model. You can see a number of different components in the different rows. And then in the middle column, you'll see a number of the different physics options that users can select for experimentation, for development, for process uh, representation. And then on the right-hand side is the specific configuration that is used within the current version of the National Water Model. So the modeling resources then that support all this uh, can be found um, largely through the Wharf Hydro website. And that's a website uh, that's been developed and maintained here for several years at NCAR and is broadly sort of being uh, linked to or accessed by other folks doing a number of different um, development work uh, related to Wharf Hydro, the National Water Model uh, around the world. So uh, here's the front page or the landing page for the modeling system uh, that you'll get when you go to the Wharf Hydro website. It's really sort of this one-stop shopping for all things Wharf Hydro. Uh, we do get a lot of traffic that gets managed on this website, um, about 180,000 page views, uh, numerous different countries around the world. Um, and we attempt to support that through a number of different mechanisms. Um, by distributing model code, by distributing processing tools, uh, support and training materials, uh, listings to presentations, publications, um, a number of the different community events that are going on, as well as profiling many people in the user community. And so on the right hand side of the web page, you'll see a lot of the links to a number of the different resources that are available. And for the next few slides, we're going to go through and look in detail about what is available uh, to different users. Uh, we're getting some feedback on chat that we're having some uh, audio challenges by different users. It doesn't seem to be everybody, um, so we're gonna look into that. Um, another thing is that uh, folks have asked if the presentation is being recorded. It is, please mute your, please mute your phone uh, so we don't get feedback. Um, we will be recording this presentation. It is being recorded. It will be posted online uh, within a day or so. Um, let's see. And uh, is there anything specific about the audio that you're hearing from people? No, please mute yourself. Yeah, OK. Please mute. We'll take questions at the end. And again, uh, please send chats in if you have a specific question. We'll try and circle back to it. OK, thanks for the little sidebar there. OK. All right, so first and foremost, most folks are interested in getting the model code. So the model code has been publicly available since about 2009, um, and it was originally distributed as a TAR package via the Wharf Hydra website, which uh, primitive versions of went active back in 2009. Things have evolved a lot since then in terms of how uh, open source codes are managed and community engagement uh, has happened. 
And more recently, uh, we've moved the entire system over to a GitHub repository. That happened about uh, two, two and a half years ago with a full public formal release of that repository in June of 2018. So if you go to the Wharf Hydro model code webpage, this is what you'll find. Uh, there's a number of different links to both the current and prior versions of the code, as well as links to the documentation uh, that was associated with each one of those. If you click and go to uh, the GitHub link on that, you'll find, uh, of course, what you'd expect to find um, on GitHub with uh, all of the different tags and releases of the code, a lot of the running discussion about model issues uh, that have happened. Um, we offer a complete and open view of code uh, that's actively being developed. Um, and there's a, a pretty uh, extensive contribution guideline that's written in the GitHub Markdown document uh, for folks to participate in this. And a lot of what that goes over are the coding standards that we'd like to see people use, as well as the process that we use for accepting code or merging code that is developed on individual branches back into the full community version. So there is a governance process that goes on with the management of the code. Uh, it's handled in a collaborative way between um, ourselves, uh, many people in the community as well uh, now um, uh, with the Office of Water Prediction uh, from NOAA uh, due to the, the, the use of the code as the national water model. There is also a, a code of conduct uh, that is provided uh, via the Wharf Hydro webpage and also to the GitHub link so that folks know what's appropriate use of the model code. I will also say that the model code has uh, the standard open source license and um, is, uh, follows most of the, the usual open source practices. Here's a, a bit more detail then on um, the documentation that's available. So if you click on the documentation uh, tab, you'll find links to all of the different kinds of documentation that exist. Some of this is purely instructional and some of this is informative. The documentation, there's over hundreds of pages of documentation on the model, including its technical description, as well as sort of the how-to of how to install uh, and execute a model run. Several of those documents have been translated into Spanish uh, thanks to some partnerships with some of the folks we've been working with uh, in Mexico uh, and also in Costa Rica. And so we offer uh, a small handful of those uh, for the most recent large release of the model um, in Spanish. Uh, on this particular uh, site though, you'll see also the, a lot more detail um, about individual components of the model in addition to sort of a large uh, PDF document. Through this uh, website um, or this link, you'll also see uh, links to our FAQ page or Frequently Asked Questions page. Uh, this is really one of the, the best places to get answers to a lot of the commonly asked questions we get in terms of where to find certain things, how to get started uh, with the modeling system, and then as users want to get into more detail, uh, what are some tips on either debugging or ingesting new or different data sets into the model? And this is constantly being updated um, with uh, feedback that we get from the user community. Okay. In addition to just basic documentation, there's been a lot of emphasis in the last several years uh, built on uh, documenting the, the different tool sets and data sets that are available as well as providing test cases and um, notebook style learning environment tools. So for each one of the uh, classes that we give with Kawasi uh, twice a year, uh, we do create Jupyter notebooks, which entail all of the lessons involved in sort of setting up and running the model. Uh, these, uh, each, each Time we give a course, we update these documents and then we immediately put them back on the, on the website so that uh, users who are not attending the live training courses have the time or have the opportunity to get essentially the same learning content that they would have gotten in the classroom environment. And so there are uh, around 10 or 11 of these that evolve in different ways um, uh, as each class is, is provided and depending on what we tend to emphasize in each one of the classes. The other thing I'll say that is created and distributed 
uh, within the modeling system is uh, a number of test cases. And so we're trying to grow the number of test cases to provide more referential uh, information for folks to use uh, the model in different situations. Right now, we offer test cases uh, using some of the standard gridded formulations of the model, as well as the national water model configuration uh, for small watersheds, not for the entire CONUS uh, uh, implementation. Uh, the training materials are distributed in the form of Docker containers, uh, and all of these tools are intended to help lower that technical barrier to entry for folks to get the code installed on their machine, because there are some software dependencies that go with that. Uh, using this Docker environment, it really makes uh, the building of the code and uh, management of a lot of those software dependencies a lot easier. And then the clear sort of documentation or how-to steps of, of setting up and running the pre and post processors and running the model code through the notebook environment is, is a, a goal of creating this information content. On the left-hand side here uh, is basically the training materials page. Uh, you'll see uh, a number of different links to all of these different resources uh, that I just talked about. Um, you can see from the download statistics here, uh, we really do manage quite a number of different folks coming into this environment, either experimenting or getting spun up on their research or application ideas um, with the model code and this training material. Okay. Because the national water model uh, configuration of Wharf Hydro is, is such a major part uh, or uh, a major instance of the model code. Uh, we have a special page for folks wanting more information about that. Um, it's important to note that the National Water Model is a NOAA-funded and NOAA-directed activity. So a lot of the links or several of the links that you'll see in here direct you back to NOAA's na official National Water Model pages, as well as many of the resources for uh, obtaining the output of the model. What we try to provide here is a bit more of the technical description uh, involved with that, as well as some presentations on the National Water Model configuration and access to several of the data files uh, that are needed to run uh, National Water Model over the entire uh, continental domain. Um, another thing that's been recently added to this website has been uh, pointers or links to where uh, a number of the long-term retrospective model runs of the National Water Model are archived on cloud resources. And one of these is uh, with Amazon's cloud resource and their hosting of National Water Model output. There are a number of other uh, commercial providers. Uh, NOAA also provides uh, much of this data as well through some of their data support services. Uh, but it's a question that we were getting a lot of, and we worked with the Office of Water Prediction to make sure that folks had a ready access to these long-term retrospectives. Uh, these are 25-year retrospectives right now, which are created for each new version of the model. Uh, so it's quite a bit of data, uh, and I do not believe many of these tools have um, sort, of the, sort of the smart filtering or um, subsetting of the data, but at least it points people to where access to those long-term uh, model retrospectives exist. Operational data, uh, links to operational output from the, the cycling national water models also provided on this web page, uh, and that's actually um, distributed by the National Centers for Environmental Prediction, or NCEP, uh, who runs the operational instance of the national water model. Okay. Uh, in addition to that, um, we also provide a user support desk. Uh, and so if you go into the website, you can submit a ticket uh, for help on certain questions. Um, a lot of times, if these are sort of the basic introductory questions on where to find things, we'll refer you back to either the FAQs or where a lot of these resources exist. Uh, but for folks who have sort of made it over that first hurdle, uh, this can be a valuable tool for getting uh, more detailed information on specific data sets and specific model configurations. You can see a rough breakout of the type of communities that we've been supporting uh, through this user forum on the help desk activity. Uh, largely, uh, our efforts have been uh, directed at supporting the university community. This includes graduate students, faculty, 
uh, and other researchers involved in this, uh, but you can see there's also quite a bit of um, information that we provide back to governments, both the U.S. as well as uh, different international governments, as well as the private sector. There is a general user forum that exists as well, which is a really nice place for users to connect with other users. This is sort of more of a, a community sort of chat room style of environment where it is moderated, um, but it is uh, really a place where people can connect with each other, help each other solve each other's problems, uh, as well as uh, uh, connect on different research ideas. And uh, it's really nice to see how different users have uh, jumped in and answered questions by other users uh, based on their own experiences. Okay, with that, I'm going to uh, stop uh, on the description of the NCAR side of the Wharf Hydro National Water Model Community Support Activities and uh, transition over to Kawazi, who's going to talk about some of the tools that have been developed uh, and hosted within the Kawazi community to support uh, interaction with Wharf Hydro and the National Water Model System. Great, thanks Dave. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna talk briefly um, about some of the efforts we are undertaking at Quasi to provide access to um, these continental scale modeling efforts for watershed scale or, or local watershed scale um, at local watershed scales. So what I mean by that is um, this figure on the right shows the uh, lower 48 states with uh, portions of Mexico and Canada. Um, what we're interested in doing is providing access to um, these data sets, um, such as the National Water Model um, data sets, at a scale of this little dot on the map. So if you're familiar with hydrologic unit codes, this would be equivalent to like a huck um, or we're interested in HUC 8s, 10s, and 12s, so relatively small scale. Um, our end goal here is to support um, research um, applications around these models and build, build communities that focus on, or help, uh, help build communities that focus on um, the methodology, physics, conceptualizations of the models without having to focus on or deal with um, the cyber infrastructure challenges at running, um, of running Kona scale models. Um, another area of emphasis is educational purposes. Um, we've used um, the tools that I'll be talking about, we've used in several um, workshops, including the Summer Institute in, throughout 2019. Um, and our end goal here is to support not just, the, not just a single model, but have a generic framework that can support a variety of um, large scale um, models. Um, so if you can go to the next slide, please. Okay. So what we came up with is, um, is a web application shown in the top left corner. It's a, all you're seeing here is a map, um, but this is a collaboration between Quasi and NCAR um, with a specific focus on providing access to um, the national water model data sets that define the simulation domain for um, CONUS. And these data sets, um, Again, that same kind of uh, shot of the of the U.S. in the top right corner, the data sets that define the simulation domain for the National Water Model um, version 1.1, um, which is what we currently support, is about 30 gigabytes in size. So um, quite large, gener you know, generally probably not something you're going to want to play around with on your local uh, desktop. Um, but the um, the subsetter would allow you to allows you to chunk this out into uh, smaller watersheds, and you may not be able to see on the screen there, but I think this was 70 megabytes in size, about, um, yeah, so that bottom right corner, about 70 megabytes of, of data. Um, so that's something that would allow you to focus um, on running the model and the, the actual science behind the model and, and not worry so much about um, the computational challenges. Um, so the data that I'm talking about here, and it's the domain or the, the data sets that define the simulation domain for Wharf Hydro configured as the national water model. And those files are shown in a little box here. Um, you're looking at, you know, a bunch of net CDF files, things that define soil properties and groundwater parameters and your, your route uh, network and things like that. 
Um, and this is a publicly available website um, that can be accessed by anyone at subset.quasi.org. Um, but let, in the next slide, um, I'll take a look, if you can advance, I'll take a look at these, uh, what exactly is in this directory of data that you get back from the, the website. Oh, okay. So yeah, zooming in on that, um, that data that you get back from the website, the, the left box that has that label of domain. Um, and if you're familiar with a typical Wharf Hydro um, simulation uh, directory, it might look something like this, this figure on the right that says run directory, where you have um, various uh, table, data, uh, table files and executables, um, as well as uh, a folder that you might put your domain data in, um, and also a folder for your, your forcing data. Now, that's obviously not the only way you can set up the, the directory, but um, what we give you from the subsetter is just the domain data. So taking uh, the source code from uh, the GitHub repository that Dave talked about um, earlier in the presentation and adding in the domain data from the subsetter, uh, you'll be able to run Wharf Hydro configured as a national water model in a test setting with idealized forcing to verify that it does in fact run. But to get more useful um, output, you'd have to collect forcing data on your own, um, such as NLDAS and regrid that to your domain. And there's you're probably using the ESMF regridding tools. Those are all, um, I believe, available on the slides that, or the resources that Dave showed earlier. And combining all of that and running this in a Docker container that's also provided by NCAR, you can generate um, some custom simulations using the uh, the domain defined or using the the data sets that define the national water model domain for any region um, of your choosing in the United States. So if you'll advance the slide, um, just want to take a look at some of the output data. So there's some caveats that we have to be aware of. Um, this is a uh, a watershed in North Carolina that we ran some tests on, and by looking at the um, operational uh, predicted stream flow and the graphs on the right, that's in red, for the um, version one of the national water model that's available on NSEP through NSEP, yeah, um, and plot that against the simulated stream flow using the subset, subsetted domain, which is in green, you'll see some slight differences. Um, and these differences um, are expected, and it's because there's a few files that are not included um, or not provided by NSAP. And one of those are the lake reservoir data. This was, it was decided not to make that um, publicly available. Um, also restart files. So we don't have access to the operational restart files, meaning that our initial conditions will differ from um, what's being used in, um, in operations. Um, and lastly, there's a configuration option um, to turn on a data simulation technique called nudging, which we do not have activated. Um, so you're going to see some, so out of the box, you're going to see some small differences in your uh, simulated stream flow when looking at what the operational model is producing. Um, and if you go to the next slide, um, there's also some other things that you have to worry about. And that is that there's no checks in this web-based tool to make sure that you've encapsulated the entire water or contributing area for a watershed. So we, in the, uh, the web application, you'll select hydrologic unit code boundaries and you'll use those to extract the, domain, the national water model domain data. Um, and in this case, I've done that, but you can see that there is a main reach that's actually flowing into this boundary that the uh, the green line on the right, our simulation does not is not aware of any kind of inflow into the basin. Whereas if you grab the entire upstream area, you might get something a little bit closer to what the operational model is predicting. So this is really just a user beware. Um, it's really on the uh, the researcher to understand um, their watershed and choose uh, choose their subset accordingly. And then in the final slide. Um, I just want to mention real briefly that um, I, I, I mentioned earlier that this has been used in several workshops in 2019, and we've been building some notebooks to help um, walk through the process of subsetting the domain data for the National Water Model, collecting and regrading forcing data, and running the work hydro simulation. 
um, using the uh, Dockerized uh, Wharf Hydro um, code. And again, running Wharf Hydro configured as national water model. Um, and these are available um, on HydroShare. So if you're interested, you can go ahead and, and search for those. Um, and that's, I think that's all I'm going to cover. So I will pass it control on to Dave. Great. Thanks, Tony. Appreciate that. So as Tony mentioned, there's been a number of different workshops that have, um, that have been held um, to uh, start to utilize many of these tools that we've been discussing. Um, here at NCAR, we've been doing uh, live hands-on training uh, of Wharf Hydro for many years, and this became a joint activity with Kawasi uh, since about 2014, 2015. Um, and so twice a year then, we do this sort of live uh, training that happens in a computer lab here at NCAR using, again, all these same resources that are being developed and distributed uh, on the Wharf Hydro website and also with Kawasi's uh, subsetter tool as well. So uh, we bring in uh, the modelers uh, to do this training uh, and provide as much uh, support as we can. Uh, our participants range from folks who've never used Wharf Hydro to folks who actually have pretty significant experience uh, and are looking to sort of uh, improve their, their understanding or depth of knowledge as well as uh, address some uh, sort of more edgy research questions. Uh, but they're also really good opportunities for people in the class to begin to network with each other. Uh, we've done a few of these uh, internationally as well. Um, we've done uh, some in Italy, some in, uh, we did one just this summer in Costa Rica uh, as part of a, a NSF funded field project that occurred down there uh, this summer. And we also provide uh, specific training uh, on the National Water Model to uh, folks within NOAA and the Office of Water Prediction and the River Forecast Offices uh, uh, that is tailored uh, to their specific operations and needs. So there is uh, quite a bit of this training that does go on. There are opportunities. We have been fairly oversubscribed uh, in the last couple years with this, largely due to uh, sort of the, you know, the, the, at least the popularity or the, the use of the model as the National Water Model. Um, so we've had over 300 participants since about 2015 in this, uh, but you can see we get applicants uh, up towards about uh, 550, so almost twice as many applicants. Uh, we try to instill with Kawazi as an objective as, as possible process for that, which is largely first come, first serve, with some basic screening for um, you know, knowledge and use of command line operations, as well as knowledge of hydrologic modeling. Uh, to get people started so that we can um, move quickly in the class and cover a lot of material. Uh, you can see the breakout there again, uh, relatively speaking, of the different kinds of participants that we're getting. It's really a nice mix. It is largely uh, academic and students uh, with some uh, faculty advisors and postdocs, uh, but quite a bit from uh, particularly uh, other sectors, uh, be it government or um, private sector folks who are looking to to learn the model for, for different applications. And I think we've had participation at different times from pretty much every agency uh, in the federal government that has a big hand in uh, modeling water in some way. So USDA, USGS, Bureau of Reclamation, Army Corps, uh, we've seen representation from, from these folks in this training workshop. Okay, so a little plug for the next workshop uh, is going to be June 1st through 5th of 2020. Again, this is collaborative with Kawazi. Kawazi uh, handles a lot of the promotion and registration for this. And um, we have applications which will be coming open in January, uh, and there's some travel support available for graduate students. Okay, and we're going to switch back over to Julia uh, from Kawazi, who's going to talk a little bit more about uh, some of these activities. Julia? Hi, thanks. Yeah, so you pretty much covered it. Um, our next uh, quasi uh, NCAR training is going to be um, in June, first week of June, and applications for that are going to be opening in January. And quasi is able to provide um, travel support for graduate students, um, which really increases the um, community and networking opportunities for these students. So that's awesome. Can we move to the next slide? 
One other um, education and outreach opportunity that Quasi is very involved in is the Summer Institute, which is a partnership between Quasi and the National Weather Service. In 2020, we'll be hosting our sixth annual Summer Institute at the National Water Center in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. This is an intensive summer course where students work in teams to develop publishable science on aspects of the national water model. So last year, multiple projects from the Summer Institute, as Tony mentioned, um, used the subsetter tool. And um, the drive of the program is to help um, educate as many students on the operation of the water model as, pos um, as possible and advance the science model. So applications just opened this morning for the 2020 Summer Institute. Um, masters and PhD students from uh, US universities are eligible to apply. And applications will be closing on January 13th. Quasi consistently hears positive feedback from our Summer Institute alum um, about the value of this program. And to that end, can we move to the next slide? Um, we're going to be having some opportunities to hear from Summer Institute alums and, and instructors at AGU, but also through an, another upcoming webinar that's being held um, on Wednesday, uh, the 20th, at 2 p.m. That's next week. And we'll hear from Freda Ogden from the National Water Center, who will be giving an overview of the program. And it's going to be a great opportunity for prospective students to ask questions about logistics and um, the application process. Like this one, that webinar will be recorded and posted on Quasi's website. So if you're not able to tune in at that time, you're always welcome to check it out on our website or reach out with any questions about the Summer Institute or Quasi's other training programs. That's all I got. Great, thanks, Julia. Okay, getting a little bit closer to the end here, we're just gonna wrap up with a few other uh, community pages that are available through the Wharf Hydro website. One of the things uh, that we've been doing is doing a periodic community spotlight from different users, um, both within the US and around the world, who are using the Wharf Hydro system for different applications, uh, and uh, have basically do an informal interview with them, talking about their research, um, what they're trying to accomplish, and what development types of uh, contributions they're making back to uh, the, the community code base. So we've been updating this uh, about every quarter, every other month or so, uh, trying to sort of entrain uh, more people and uh, really use this as a networking opportunity for uh, different developers to connect with other developers, as well as sort of promote their research um, that is, uh, that's being generated from use of the modeling system. Uh, there's a variety of different ways that we've gone over here, and this slide here just summarizes all the different sort of connection methods uh, and community resources that are available for learning more about uh, what's coming out in terms of Wharf Hydro development, uh, about different releases, about training courses. Um, so there's some social media outlets uh, that exist, uh, as well as these user forms and email listserv. Uh, you can sign up to get news releases uh, in the community spotlights. Of course, there's the, the main contact for the user support forms and then uh, the events. And uh, several of these are sort of cross-listed with Kawasi uh, and their regular update and uh, promotion of hydrologic community activities. Uh, so there's a number of different ways you can sort of stay engaged with what's going on uh, in terms of this community model development, uh, including links to other modeling activities uh, not Wharf Hydro related as well. Part of uh, these community pages then include a uh, publications page. So we try and track as many of the papers uh, that are written using uh, the Wharf Hydro modeling code, or in some cases, uh, data sets or pre and post processing tools that are relevant for users of Wharf Hydro uh, and potentially the national water modeling system. So this is something uh, we try to update several times a year if you get uh, if you've been generating publications or you find stuff, feel free to send on a reference to us. We'd be happy to, to host that here. Um, if you go through this list, you'll see uh, really a lot of different applications uh, around the world, uh, not just here in the U.S. There's been a lot of activity uh, in certain sort of what I would call like hotbeds of, of groups that have used the model in different places throughout the world, in particular, a uh, group in uh, southern Germany at the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology has uh, done a lot of work with Wharf Hydro. Uh, they've used the model down in Africa. There's some groups in Italy 
who have used the model and we're seeing a fairly significant uptick in uh, use and publication and users from uh, both China and India as well. Uh, similarly, uh, presentations is another thing that we're trying to track as much as possible. So we'll put a number of the different talks that are relevant uh, for Wharf Hydro or National Water Model at some of the major conferences that happen. Uh, in particular, we've got AGU coming up uh, as well as AMS. So here in the next week or so, we'll start putting in uh, links to all of the abstracts that have been sent uh, submitted, not just from uh, our group here at NCAR or our immediate colleagues, but other ones that we can find that are, are relevant or appear to be relevant for uh, this type of community modeling activity. So that can also serve as a resource for those wanting to find more information uh, at these conferences. And then after the conferences, uh, we try and go back and provide links to some of these, at least to the official conference website where users or, or people can often view the presentations. Uh, if the presenter decided to uh, allow publication of their presentation. Okay, and then lastly here, um, I just wanted to show this uh, map of the world that Molly uh, has worked up here, which shows sort of the relative um, density of people from around the world accessing the online resources. Uh, and it gives you an idea of the geographic distribution of where uh, the model has been either used or we're getting a lot of uh, interest in terms of people wanting to learn more about the model, downloading either the code uh, from the GitHub repository or many of the test cases and documentation. Um, so some of these are, are fairly isolated, but some of these are, are certainly starting to show a large not amount of interest. Uh, clearly, the United States is the dominant uh, accessor and user uh, and applications realm, but we are starting to see, again, upticks coming from uh, China and India, areas within Europe that I've mentioned. Um, folks in Israel have been longtime users of the model. And then more recently, uh, interest from folks uh, throughout different parts of Latin America have started uh, using the modeling system for both operational forecasting activities as well as, as research. So if you're um, sort of from this larger diaspora and you're looking to connect with people, uh, doing different kinds of research, um, certainly get in touch with the forums that exist or contact us directly and we can try and put you in touch with people uh, in the areas uh, that you're working on if they're uh, looking at similar problems or just may have uh, uh, some access or knowledge of other data sets in many of these areas around the world. Uh, it's a great way to connect with people and, and take advantage of uh, the larger community aspect of this. And with that, um, that is essentially it. Uh, again, here's the top two listings of the websites from Kawazi as well as uh, the Wharf Hydro website here at NCAR. Again, all of these resources, training material, links to code, uh, user support mechanisms, test cases, pre and post processing tools uh, are all available uh, online. And many of them are documented in ways either with technical descriptions or at least with, say, a Jupyter Notebook so that folks can get started using these. Um, we certainly welcome participation. I will say we obviously can't support every single piece of code that we've ever written, so bear with us as we, as we do this documentation and support to roll things out. Uh, we're certainly doing our best to, to try and get things out to the community in a way that is sort of clear and understandable for them to use. Um, I'd like to thank the presenters from Kawazi, uh, Tony Castronova and Julie Masterman, Julia Masterman, uh, who talked about some of their activities. I really want to throw a special thanks out to Molly here at NCAR for um, creating a lot of the content, managing our website, and uh, managing uh, the webinar activity here. With that, we're going to look at our chats and see if there's any specific questions or uh, pivot to take questions from the broader audience. So. Bear with us as we shift gears here for a second. Okay, so the first question we're getting here, um, folks from Latin America using WARF and GFS uh, for that, which is the main source of data that we use WARF Hydro. Um, this is a good question. Uh, really, the, the, the basic question is, is what kinds of meteorological data uh, are needed to run Wharf Hydro. Uh, there is some pretty clear documentation on this and I think uh, an FAQ as well. We have data tools, pre and post processing data tools, which 
allow for the processing of uh, meteorological data from WARF, from GFS, uh, to prepare that data for ingest into WARF Hydro. There's usually a regridding, uh, a reuniting of the data, as well as uh, some naming change, name, variable naming change conventions that have to happen. Uh, so some tools to handle that are on the website. Um, and we do obviously support the use of that in this sort of one way from an atmospheric model to the Wharf Hydro hydrologic model. Okay. Um, the faculty advisor applications for the Summer Institute. I think that is a question for the Quasi folks. Uh, when are you taking faculty advisor applications for the Summer Institute? Uh, Julie or Tony, would you like to handle that? Uh, we're currently Emily, you got this? <laughs> so this is Emily at Quasi. We are currently working um, with the Nestle Water Center on faculty applications for the female layer positions at the Summer Institute. So if that's something that you're interested in, I would um, recommend that you contact us directly and we can provide additional information. Um, and Julia, if you want to throw your email address into the chat. Julia's email is also on the slide that's active right now. Yep, there we go. Thanks. Okay. Um, there's another question here. What kinds of outputs would we get out of Wharf Hydro? Uh, listing those again. Sure. So, you know, Wharf Hydro is a distributed hydrologic model, it gives you outputs of uh, soil moisture, uh, depth to saturated surface in the ground, stream flow, um, river stage, uh, river velocity, um, snowpack conditions, evapotranspiration. Uh, a lot of the essentially main uh, terrestrial surface water budget items that you would need are uh, accounted for in Wharf Hydro as well as uh, several of the uh, energy flux terms um, that exist. Um, are there any specific guidelines to use the Python written calibration tool? Um, this is a great question. It does come up. There are a few different ways to do calibration uh, with Wharf Hydro uh, and the national water model. We've written some here in house. Other users in the community have connected to automated calibration tools like PEST, or um, ORCID or the dynamically dimensioned search algorithm. Um, we are trying to document and create learning tools for the Python-based calibration tool that we use here that's used for the national water model. Uh, it's not publicly supported yet, uh, but we're hoping to get some things worked up by that spring workshop uh, with Kawazi in June. So all I could say is stay tuned for that. We certainly I uh, don't want to release anything that we can't support at this point in time, so uh, we're doing our best to get that out. But there are other methods to use as well. Um, okay, uh, we do have a lot of technical questions coming in. Um, again, we're not really focusing on that here, so I'll refer you back to documentation for that, but I'll answer a couple of them. Uh, soil moisture data in the model. Uh, is generated internally. Uh, there are some new emerging research projects which are looking at doing soil moisture data assimilation. Uh, if you're interested in that kind of thing, certainly get in touch. Um, can people participate in training online? We have not yet done a formal online training that mimics the sort of classroom environment that we do. We have started to produce some YouTube videos uh, based on uh, going through different activities. Um, I would say stay tuned for more of those, uh, but so far we haven't done the, um, the equivalence of a classroom training online. One of the biggest reasons for that is managing the technical side of what a user's experiencing, meaning they have to get the containers installed on their machine and, and be ready to go uh, to be able to participate. And sometimes that creates a barrier to entry. One of the ways that's being addressed is by migrating the code and all of these tools up to commercial cloud resources. Uh, and I know Kawazi is also doing some work on 
migrating several of these tools onto HydroShare as a, as a cloud-based community resource. So I would say in response to that, uh, again, stay tuned over the next several months, I think more and more of this material is going to be able to be executed on the cloud, which will greatly facilitate uh, us and Kawazi being able to do sort of live remote training types of activities because everybody will be using a, a technical platform which is sort of unified and already vetted. Okay, moving on. Um, let's see. Is irrigation simulated in the model? That is currently a research project. So if you're interested in that, get in touch uh, via email and we can try and connect you with some of the people doing that. Um, similarly with lakes and reservoirs, uh, water management has traditionally been something in the model that was not represented in a very detailed way. Uh, there is work that's being led by the Office of Water Prediction, which is targeting uh, the ingest of more operational uh, water management data into the National Water Model instance of Wharf Hydro, uh, but it should be generally applicable to other configurations as well. Um, so there's a lot of research again going on in the area of representing water management. And that's certainly uh, something that uh, if you're interested in, we'd love to connect with you um, and talk about different ways to do that. We've got a few different research projects going on here. And then, of course, the, the National Water Model-led effort uh, by the Office of Water Prediction is really starting to, to move that forward. Are we planning to create a Python tool for creating domain and model setup? Uh, great question. The answer to that is yes. Um, so uh, earlier, uh, there was a slide that showed several of the different uh, pieces of software that we support. Right now, the model setup in terms of all the geospatial data layers is done uh, formally with ArcGIS. And we realize that many folks in the community don't have uh, access to an ArcGIS license. So our GIS team here at NCAR is uh, actively right now moving towards uh, putting all of those tools, geoprocessing tools, hydrography, channel network generation tools, water body definition tools, uh, into a set of open space Python geospatial libraries. Uh, we have a prototype of that available. Uh, again, it's not quite pushed out to the community, but if that's something you're interested in, uh, get in touch and uh, we can try and connect you and maybe you could be a, a beta tester of this capability uh, over the next couple months because it's clearly something we've heard from the community that is needed and I think we are getting close to being able to support that. Um, let's see, we need to wrap up. I think the rest of these are technical, so I'm sorry if I didn't get to all the, the model technical questions. Um, again, this presentation was really about just trying to give folks that introduction to what community resources are available from Kawazi and from NCAR to support Wharf Hydro and National Water Model Configuration types of activities. Um, like to thank everybody for joining on and, and certainly do get in touch uh, to any of the folks on these emails or to the user support uh, forums or tickets uh, with uh, other specific questions and we'll try and keep you going. Uh, again, there's another training workshop coming up and registration is going to be open January. in January. Uh, so uh, stay tuned for that. We'll certainly be putting out notices uh, through our website, Twitter feed, and, and as well through Kawazi as well uh, for folks to apply to that workshop. Um, so with that, thanks again, everybody. We really appreciate it. And I guess as they say, we'll see you online. Bye-bye.